Nuggets, and you just, in the back of your mind, thought the Clippers are going to find a way, right, to recover from going down 3-1. So and focus on your love of my lettuce. Okay. First day, last day. All right, yeah, just roll it. Just... Kawhi Leonard. That might be the biggest choke job we've ever seen in NBA history. I mean, it was that bad. It was that bad. We're talking about a two-time MVP. We're talking about a two-time champion who Max Kellerman has bloviated about being the best in the world. And what happens? You're up 3-1 in the second round, not the conference finals, in the second round against Denver, Jamal Murray and Nikolai Jokic, not LeBron James. And in the second round, up 3-1, you blow a 3-1 lead. What do you do? You shoot 6-22 from the field. You shoot 1-11 in the second half. You didn't even get to the free throw line. Just an absolute positive choke job period oh it's just that simple i was wrong Kawhi cannot play like that in the seventh game of a series period in any series and be considered the best player in the world the only possible saving grace for the clippers and Kawhi is if the nuggets do the same thing to the lakers but paul george doesn't get taken off the hook either i mean his uh, performance was abysmal. It was just as bad as Kawhi Leonard. When you're in a corner wide open behind the three-point line and you hit the side of the backboard, the side of the backboard, and you can't buy a basket, I can't let him off the hook. I can't let Lou Williams, Lemon Pepper Lou, off the hook either. Your job is to score. That's your job, to find a way to stop the bleeding. Unfortunately, everybody's looking at that coaching staff. Why? Because load management, Lack of team chemistry, team not being together, acting like prima donnas, it all came back to bite them in the you-know-what. Between Paul George and Kawhi Leonard salaries this year and the fact they traded their yeah. whole team, they basically paid $65 million to go one round longer than they did last season. Kawhi's a made man, though. He's done it. San Antonio did it with Toronto. Yes, he had. And Kawhi gets a pass. Uh, who's the – if the person's out there that does baby Stephen A., can we get that on all of that? I'm sure it's coming. Just for my entertainment. Comb the interwebs. <laughs> all right, so. I know we're in week three of the college football season, but it feels like it got a little more real this morning with the Big Ten announcing they will return to college football end of October. College game day is Kirk Herbstreit, kind enough to join us this afternoon. And Kirk, your reaction to the Big Ten reversing course today? Maddie, this is a big day, obviously, for, for uh, college football. I mean, it's, it's big. Not, I don't say that as a Big Ten guy, as a you know, former Ohio State Buckeye player. I say that as a, as a fan of college football, you know, that to not have the Big Ten and the Pac-12 included in, in the CFP and just the season in general, um, it's been weird. It's been strange. And, and we, we've missed having both those power conferences in and to, to uh, we as you and I follow this closely, we've heard about rumors that the presidents may revisit and and look at some new data, new testing protocol, and thought about it might be a possibility. Uh, you know, over the last four or five days, and now it's a reality. And this is a big celebration and big news for the Big Ten, and and to me for all college football is as we uh, you know we we're kind of all walking on a tightrope to uh, to kind of see where the season's going to go, but. It's all very exciting to hear that the Big Ten has decided to play based on the info that they've received. Yeah, and you and I have even talked about it. It's a week-to-week -week thing. Just because we teed up one week doesn't mean we're necessarily locked in to teed up the next week. But as long right. as we keep stacking weeks on top of each other, now the Big Ten has about five weeks or so before they kick off. And I'm curious to get your take on this because we've heard a number of stars in this conference decide to opt out. This was when they decided they weren't going to play, but they've opted out. Herbie, how do you think the NCAA should handle this situation if a player like Sean Wade comes back and says, hey, you know what? I changed my mind. I want to play. Now, I, I, I would have to check with, um, you know, with the conference and, and maybe the NCAA. I've talked with a number of coaches throughout this entire un unprecedented season about with COVID and the virus out there and talked with guys who said, yeah, I, I had four guys opt out on Tuesday and they were done. And then Thursday, they opted back in. And then two or three days later, they opted back out. So I, I want to make sure everybody understands the way it's been explained to me. Opting out and declaring for the NFL draft as a third year, you finish three years and you, you're opting out that you're going to forego your fourth year of eligibility and go into the NFL draft. You're, you're done at that point. You sign with an agent. 
opting out and opting in, you could opt out, opt in all you want. There isn't anything that prevent you know, unless these two have signed Wyatt Davis, Sean Wade, unless they've signed with an agent and move forward with their, their profession, they're receiving money and that type of thing to start to train. Unless they've gone down that path, then at that point, all bets are off and your, your college eligibility is over. But if you're just verbally on Twitter saying you've opted out, uh, there's nothing at all that can prevent you from, you know, quote unquote, opting back in. It's just what, what those two, uh, as we're talking about them as examples, what those two have done as far as away from, uh, you know, the cameras, if they signed and if they started training and actually getting ready for the NFL. And as I said, if they've done that, then they would, of course, be eliminated. But I have no idea what, what those two or any of these players from the Big Ten who have decided to opt out. But if any of them see that now the Big Ten is playing and they haven't gone down that path of training and, and receiving benefits from an agent, then they would be able to come back in. They can go in and, you know, in and out, in and out as often as you'd like as far as opting. That, that phrase we're now hearing, opting out and opting back in. That, that You can do that as often as you'd like. Well, we hope to see some of those stars back on the field, and, and we're excited that you're going to opt back into the ABC booth <laughs> this Saturday with Louisville, Miami. You opted in for the NFL one week. One week thing. Great job out there. We look forward to having your call, Louisville, Miami. Appreciate you joining us on your day off, Herbie. It's going to be a dogfight. You know, we both have great opportunities in front of us. And, you know, we both want it, so it's going to be a war. I ain't forgot. They said I remember to talk. I'm getting bread, so it's what you thought. Play on the way. Got it, Jimmy Buckets. Another five minutes of play. The step back. Kemble Walker giving Boston the lead. Into traffic. Got it. And one. Jimmy Butler delivering. And they get it done at the defensive end. Blocked at the rim by Dan. Not in my house. The Heat win game one. That's why he's the hardest hole of our team. Right there. Bam out of bios blocks got everybody talking. Greatest dunk or block rather in postseason history. Well, here's John Starks trying to get a three and Akeem Olajuwon being like, no. He got one finger on it. That's all you needed. It's a Kawhi. Rockets would win. This is another contender. Reggie Miller gets the feed. This one's so good. Tayshaun Prince. No! This is one of the best of all. To be fair, Reggie Miller finished with a little more authority. You shouldn't see him coming. Yeah. This is a good one, too. Tiago Splitter. Oh, LeBron! Yeah. Again, like, when you square up and don't foul, that's what's incredibly impressive. We've never seen Tiago Splitter, I think, is Stephen A. <laughs> no one's lining up to see Tiago Splitter! <laughs> this is a great one. I mean, they memorialized this in Cleveland before, of course, taking down the mural. The block on Iggy in game seven of the finals, and then they would win. And how about this one? Manu! Get out of here, James Harden. That's good. And embarrassing. I miss Manu. Alex Caruso has sort of replaced him as the bald eagle, but Manu was the first. Yeah, but is it Caruso like 24? Yeah. That was old Manu. Male pattern balding is an issue for many men. Maybe not you, Matt, but. That's. Certainly not an issue for the guys on first take who everybody's talking about like the heat game and how